Hello, everyone. Thank you for having your interest in this session. My name is Kazaki Ishizaki from IUM Research Tokyo. This talk is Goodbye Hell of Union in Spark Seeker. I talk about three points in this session. First, we would see performance issue, unfortunately, when we use union function in Spark SQL or data frame. We call this performance issue hell. Second, why the performance issue happens? Third, how we can fix this performance issue? Finally, we can say goodbye to performance hell of union operation in Spark SQL at the end of this talk. Let me introduce myself quickly. I'm a researcher at IBM Research Tokyo. My expertise is compile optimization, runtime, language runtime, and parallel processing. I became a committer of Apache Spark 2018, and I also became a committer of Apache Arrow. They have a strong relationship. Apache Spark uses Apache Arrow to accelerate Py PySpark performance. I have been working for IBM Java Virtual Machine over 25 years, in particular just-in-time compiler part. Recently, my research, focus, my research focus is on compiler for AI hardware accelerator. Here is the agenda of this talk. First, let us review the behavior of union operation in Spark Seeker. I think it is not frequently used, and you are not familiar with it. Then I'll talk about one of the use cases of union operation. Next, I'll share what is a hell when we use union operation in Spark Seeker. The hell is the performance issue. Then I talk why this hell happens and how we can fix the, this hell in performance. Finally, I'll conclude this talk with takeaways. Do you know union operation? This is one of function in Spark Seeker. Union operation can merge two data frames into one data frame without shuffling data. Join operation is very famous in Spark SQL, which leads to the two data frame and generate one new data frame. However, join operation usually involves two shuffle data among partitions. So union operation quickly uh, generate new data frame. Let me show you an example of union operation. Now we have two data frames, A and B. Each data frame is partitioned by two. Then union operation in the middle of this figure merges to data frames A and B and returns new one data frame C. The number of columns should be same between two data frames A and B as an input of union. Here, without shuffling data, two data frames are merged into one new data frame C. In this case, we assume each partition on two data frames A and B, they are same. Thus, the number of partition of Data frame C is still two. If each partition on two data frames A and B are different, the number of partition of data frame C will be increased, for example, three or four. Here, I'll talk about one of the use cases of a union operation. Usually, enterprise company has a lot of legacy processes that reads database that is table in database and generate result by execu executing sequence. 
Recently, this enterprise company would like to get the business insights from these a lot of huge results on modern scale analytics platform such as Apache Spark. How to do it? In this case, first we execute legacy CKL code on Apache Spark. Then merge these results using union uh, operation into one data frame for ease of analysis. Again, it will be good to say again, union operation itself does not involve any data transfer. So we can quickly match our these results into one data frame. Then we analyze merged data on a scalable data platform, Apache Spark. Finally, we can easily get the business insights from those uh, legacy processes in the left hand side. What scenario is the hell in terms of performance? I'll explain the scenario with this diagram. In next page, I show you the source code of Apache Spark corresponds to this diagram. In this scenario, four databases are joined. Then four different filter operations are applied to join result. Then four filter results are union into one data frame in the right hand side. Here we can see only three join operations in the left hand side. Here is a Spark source code written in Scala language. The first four lines read database into data frames T1, T2, T3, T4. Next three lines perform the three join operations against four databases that we read. Then next four lines apply different filter operation against the same join result in DF join. Finally, the last line union all results into one data frame. What is here? In this program, a lot of data transfer occurs than we expect, while only three join appears in the source code in previous page. Data transfer takes much time in general and it likely becomes one of performance bottlenecks in the CKL operation. So this code could run slowly. Here is a list of executed jobs for the program in previous page. Let us see the detail of each job from next page. When I visit the detail of the uh, first nine jobs, zero to eight, I saw the non-zero data come in shuffle right. It means each job sends the data to another job. Then I visited the detail of other jobs, nine and 10. I saw the non-zero data come in shuffle read. It means this job receives the data from other jobs. Then I visited the detail of last job 11. I also saw non-zero data come in shuffle read again. So we are seeing total nine data transfer that sent by jobs 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Why we just executed only three joints. We do not expect such a large number of data transfer only for three joins. Why did the data transfers happen? I visited the Spark, uh, Spark CK plant and put the uh, only last uh, physical plant here. You can see a lot of uh, exchange operation uh, in both, which involves data transfers. We can also see the similar eight sort, mar sort merge joins, some of them could be used by analyzing CKL plan. 
when we execute join operation, Catalyst in Spark usually optimize join operation extensively if we use instead of uh, union operation. This is because join operation is one of potential performance bottleneck in general. However, Catalyst in Spark does not seem to optimize union operation ex extensively compared to join operation. So, how do we reduce data transfer? If Catalyst does not optimize uh, CKs for union operations automatically, we need to optimize CKs manually. In this case, to reuse the data as much as possible is the best approach by caching data on memory for reducing data transfer. Now, question is which data we should cache in this uh, diagram? In this case, here in green is a good place to cache data for use after finishing three join operations in the middle. Then, in the source code, we manually insert cache operation against join result DF join after we execute three join operations. Now, question is, can we say goodbye to hello her that involves many data transfer after modifying source code? The answer is yes we can say goodbye. This is because the number of jobs are reduced from 12 to three, as you can see here. Also, we can see the reduction of data transfers from nine to five. After modifying source code in job zero, stages zero, one to three, send data to stage four. Stage four, send the data to Another job one. Totally, we have five data transfer here. By about two times, the number of data transfers can be reduced. Also, in execution time, we achieved 23% reduction, I measured. If there are more joints in the program, Reduction rate will be rate more, more, more uh, large. Let us see the last physical plan of CKs for modified program. You can see four subplans in green. So these are uh, subplans in green are uh, exactly the same. Just I omitted uh, for the simplicity in the right hand side. We have the same four subplans, and they are reused as we expected. So number of the data transfer in both are reduced after uh, we modify the program. This is the last page of this talk. Here are takeaways. First, union operation is useful to unify multiple data source without data transfer. We can use union operation for legacy uh, job, legacy process modernization. Second, Catalyst Optimizer in Spark performs less optimization to union operations rather than join operations. Last, it is important to review details on jobs and plan and modify program based on those reviews to reduce unexpected data transfer. Thank you for your attention.